and welcome to my channel. So I'm so excited for today's video as it's about a topic that I am very passionate about, a type of therapy that has transformed my life called DBT. Just to explain the funky headphones, I've already tried to film this video once and my sound quality on my phone's a bit off, but it sounds fine with these on. So I've been doing this therapy for over a year now, around 18 months, I think, and how it works is it's split into four separate modules. So what I was wanting to do is give an overview of the therapy itself, what it does, what it can help with, and a breakdown of the four modules with my favorite skill from each. So what is DBT? It stands for Dialectical Behavior Therapy and it is a weekly group session that I attend. You can also do one-to-one -one sessions with the instructors but I just attend the weekly sessions personally and um, the individual slogan for DBT is to build a life worth living and it's helped me do just that. So DBT is all about helping you cope with overwhelming emotions and was designed by a lady called Marsha Linehan. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I'll put the name on screen so I've definitely got the spelling right. And um, it was originally designed to help people with BPD, so borderline personality disorder, but it can also help with other psychological issues such as eating disorders, self-harm, depression and substance abuse. So I personally have BPD and in the past I've battled with substance abuse issues and an eating disorder disorder so it's helped me massively in these areas and that is why I'm such an advocate for this therapy. So basically within DBT there's four options for solving any problem so you can first of all do nothing which they would never advise so that would be using no skills or you can tolerate the problem or you can change your perspective on the problem or ultimately you can solve the problem. So by attending the sessions and learning the skills, you'll be able to decide which one is appropriate for which situation you're in. So now for the four modules. So I'm gonna do these in no particular order. The first module is emotion regulation. Now the clue is in the title with this module. It basically helps you regain control of your emotions so you can change unwanted emotions once they start and also stop them from occurring in the first place. So my favourite skill from emotion regulation is one called opposite action, which is exactly as it sounds. It's a fantastic skill that I've had great results with and you have to really fully throw yourself into the skill. So what it does is it involves going directly against however you're feeling. So if you're feeling low in mood or energy, then you basically get yourself up and get active. Now this skill really works and I've got an example of when I used it recently and had great results. So I've been suffering a depressive episode, I've been in bed for a good few days, very very low in mood, um, not able to do much at all and basically my electric blanket broke and it's the one thing that brings me true comfort and joy, I love my electric blanket. So I decided to use this skill. So I had to really really dig deep and I had to get myself out of bed, get dressed, sort out my hair and um, get myself to Argos to get a replacement. Now, it wasn't easy at first, I will say that, because you have to go directly against what you're feeling at the time. But what I found was by making these small steps towards getting to where I wanted to be, it helped lift me out of the depressive episode much quicker than if I had just wallowed in the sadness. Now say with something like severe clinical depression, I would advise that you see a doctor in that instance, but I know that for me personally and my depressive episodes, this skill has really helped me out multiple times. The next module is distress tolerance. And this is all about dealing with crisis situations without making things worse. So it teaches you how to sit with uncomfortable feelings without engaging in self-destructive behaviours and it's been a literal lifesaver for me. So I'm now able to use this when I feel like I'm about to enter a meltdown phase and it's helped save me multiple hospital admissions by using the skills from this module. My favourite skill from this module is called the tip skill and it's an anagram so it stands for temperature, intense exercise, paced breathing, and paired muscle relaxation. Now I use each of these, but the one I go to in times of a crisis is intense exercise. I think the logic behind this is it helps sort of reboot your system. So when you're getting flustered and you feel like you're getting out of control, it helps to kind of kickstart you back into so you're thinking straight again. So basically, um, it really helps me when I'm feeling distressed mentally so I can do a minute of star jumps or maybe just sprinting on the spot. And under the temperature category, something that has really helped me is to put an ice pack on my face. And I do that when I have to go get a blood test because I find I can get really het up and nervous. It helps a lot. 
So the third module is interpersonal effectiveness and this is all about how you communicate with other people. So there are some great objectives in this module. So you can learn things such as um, how to make new relationships, how to end destructive ones, how to communicate how you feel or what you need to others and walking the middle path, which is basically about creating and maintaining balance in relationships. So one of my favourite skills from this module is quite a straightforward one called the give skill, which is another anagram. So it stands for gentle, interested, validate and easy manner. And it's basically all about how you conduct yourself when you're talking to someone. So I would advise that this is a good skill, not even just to use for DBT purposes, but just in general life, because I find that by using this skill and adopting this mindset when I'm talking to people, they are so much more receptive. And the final module is the, the, the mindfulness. So I'm sure you've heard of mindfulness before. It is not something that is just exclusive to DBT. But what I do like is they have created a whole module for it. And we cover it more than the other three. So what you do is you do one of the modules and you go back to mindfulness. One of the modules back to mindfulness. And it really helps you master the art of it. Okay, so I'm going to read out the official definition from the workbook I've got of what mindfulness is so I get this right. So, mindfulness helps to focus attention on the present moment, what is going on within ourselves and what is going on around us. It helps us stay centred. Or also, as Marsha puts it, and I really like this, it's about staying in control of your mind without your mind being in control of you. So the mindfulness module is basically split into two sections of skills. So you've got the what skills and the how skills. So the what skills are observe, describe and participate. And the how skills are non-judgmentally, one mindfully and effectively. The what skills basically tell you what you need to do when you practice in mindfulness. And the how skills, as you can guess, is how you do it. <laughs> So just to go over the how skills in a little bit more detail. So non-judgmentally means having the experience without adding judgments to it. One mindfully means focusing only on the task at hand. So no multitasking and effectively means doing what is right and needed in that moment. So a perfect example of not being effective would be to do busy work where you do it a lot, but you're actually not doing very much at all. So my favourite out of mindfulness um, is probably effectively, and I use this all the time now, because it means that you do what needs to be done rather than just cherry picking through your tasks for the day and picking what's the easiest. So uh, I've had great success with this. I've achieved projects that I've put off for a long time. And just as a whole, I really, really like mindfulness. So that's an overview of the four modules and there's just one more skill that I really need to mention that you kind of use across the board in DBT. I believe it's learned in the emotion regulation section though and it's called check the facts. So the clue is in the title of this one again and you literally check the facts of the situation you're in. So not your assumptions on it, not your opinions, just the true facts. Now what this has really helped with me is seeing situations from other people's perspective. And that means in turn, I don't suffer emotionally when people don't maybe react in the way that I was expecting them to. Um, it's helped me identify, basically, I'm not the only person on this planet with feelings. We all go through our own stuff personally, which should be appreciated and validated. A lot of conflict actually arises from incorrect assumptions. So this can really help resolve a potential conflict that could have come up in a situation. It's a brilliant skill. Okay, so that's the four modules covered. And what I was wanting to do now is just do a little bit on how to access DBT if you're interested. So if you've listened to this video and you might think it's something that could work for you, I'd recommend you look into it. So the way I got enrolled onto DBT personally was because my care coordinator at the time suggested it to me. Um, it was coupled with medication, which I still take. I'd never heard of DBT when she mentioned it, but when I looked into it, it literally seemed like the perfect option for me and I was really, really keen to get started. If you don't have a care coordinator, then I would probably advise that your best protocol would be to speak to your doctor and express your interest in the therapy. Um, they might be able to advise accordingly on what routes are available to you. So yeah, speak to your doctor. You could also potentially, I suppose, learn it from home, say through online material, but it's really strongly advised you go to group sessions. Now, one of the main things I found with this is you do homework feedback at the start of each, each session. So that's um, which skills you've been implementing over the last week and how exactly you've done that. So what you've been working on. And this really helps you stay motivated and stay on track as you go through the modules.
Also with the group session, it's a really safe space to share your emotions with others and truly feel validated. So I would definitely suggest looking into getting involved in an actual course. Okay, so time for a conclusion and to wrap up the video. So one important thing that I really, really do need to mention is DBT can seem like a lot of work to people at the start. And as cliche as it sounds, the more you put into it, the more you truly do get out of it. It can be difficult to use the skills automatically at first, but it's really important not to get frustrated. Um, I've just given you a few examples, but there's so many different skills that can help you. And once you go through the modules and you start to realize you're using them automatically, it just feels absolutely amazing and like you're really taking back control of your life and your emotions. Okay, so that's DBT in a nutshell. Um, I'm really, really hoping that this video has helped give you a decent overview of what it's all about. Um, so please, please explore it if you're interested because it really has helped transform my life. I've tried to be as accurate as possible with the terminology and things. So I did do a bit of research beforehand to make sure I got it right. Um, so if I made any mistakes, I do apologize. If you did find this video helpful, then please leave a like or a comment. They really do make me smile and subscribe for future content I do make all kinds of different videos so there's something that might just appeal to you I'd also be happy to explore any of these skills in further detail if you're interested so you could just leave me a comment and let me know ciao for now